Good day, Doctor. My name is Lin Yeong, who is responsible for the Erosion and Sediment Control Plan Department. So, my major presentation will be the ACP, while the minor will be the Earthwork, Water Reticulation, Costing and Estimation. In my presentations, there are four topics I will cover. I will start with the Earthwork presentation first. So, Earthwork is an engineering work that involves the processing and movement of massive quantities of soil or unformed rock. The first thing the Earth Work Department did is to do a site inventory, which includes a list of all the elements that are currently on the site. This is to collect useful, high-quality data that will be used during the site analysis. Some of the information needed for site inventory includes the site location, existing topography, existing structure, existing facilities, existing buildings, trees, and vegetation. Next, site analysis is carried out to inspect the current environment to ascertain how it will affect the design. Some of the information needed for site analysis includes climatic context, geographical context, historical context, social context, legal context, and infrastructural context. Furthermore, the purpose level is then determined using our try and error method by referring to the existing control level. Next, the site is divided into several zones. The, then the proposed level is for each zone is determined by referring to the highest and lowest points in that particular zone. Lastly, the difference between the cut and fill volume should be controlled under 20% to minimize the soil imports and reduce the construction costs. The grid method is used to calculate the cut and fill volume. The smaller the size, grid size used, the higher the accuracy. So the difference between the cut and fill is controlled under 20%. Step 1, the grid size is chosen as 50 meter times 50 meter. Step 2, the site is divided into several zones. Step 3, draw uniform grid lines. Step 4, determine the reduced level at each corner of the grid and label as original points, OP. OP. Step 5, calculate the difference between the proposed level and the original points and label as SP, which is the spot height. Step 6, find the average difference between the spot heights. Next, multiply the average SP difference by the area of each grid. Lastly, sum up the total cut volume and fill volume. Basically, there are two types of slope, uh, which are natural and man-made. Next, there are a few types of failures such as fall, topple, slide, spread, and flow. Besides, the factor of safety is the ratio of the maximum load you can, that the soil can sustain. It can be calculated using the Bishop simplified method, which uses the static equilibrium of slices of soil to determine the factor of safety. Next, there are a few types of retaining walls such as gravity retaining walls, cantilever retaining walls, embedded retaining walls, and reinforced soil retaining walls. It helps to provide extra support in certain places to prevent the earth from moving downhill with erosion or caused by the landslides. In our project, it was built on a slope in which the difference in reduced level between vertical and horizontal distance is more than 10 meters. A gravity retaining wall with a wider base is chosen. Next, move on to the water reticulation system. So, the water reticulation system has these few components such as storage tanks, pumps, pipelines, joints and fittings, control valves and meters, fire hydrant and truss. For pipe network system, there are two types such as closed loop pipe network and dead end pipe network. For closed loop, it allows free flow of water supply in many directions. If there is maintenance, the water supply could still reach the surrounding buildings by this network. For dead end, water does not flow continuously along with the pipe system. The pipe system is distributed to multiple branches such as main lines, sub mains, and branch lines. Any damages in the branch lines will affect other users in the sub main lines. Next, I will discuss the design criteria for nodes and pipes. For nodes, the residual pressure at each node must be sufficient to allow water to flow without pumping during the, uh, pumping during the peak flow. The minimum residual pressure is 7.5 meter, while the maximum is 30 meter. Then for pipes, the minimum pipe size is, must be 100 millimeter. The minimum velocity of water flows in each pipe must be at least 0.3 meter per second and not exceed 2, 2 meter per second. Head losses should be less than 2 meter per 1000 meter for gravity flow. Hazel Williams formula is used to calculate the head loss in each pipe. So the HDP pipes are used as these are suitable for mixed development areas that consist of different types of premises such as flats and industrial buildings. So this diagram shown in is the pipe network area for our 
department. Then, the water demand and storage capacity is also calculated. First, the design is based on one day storage. The average flow in the part was determined based on the total storage volume in the tank per day. In the uh, unit is in liter per day. Lah. Next, the total water demand is calculated by multiplying the area and average daily water demand. Last, the minimum dimensions of the combination of the suction system, pumping station, and service reservoir is 32 meter times 81 meter. It is determined based on the average daily water demand. Next, the peak flow rates are calculated to design the pipe size. So the peak flow rates can be calculated by using the formula below. It is 2.5 times the average flow rate QA, while the factor is 2.5 because our site is considered as an urban and rural areas. Moving on to the calculation by using IPANET, which is the water distribution system modeling software. So the node is a point in the pipe network that connects the pipe together and where water enters or exits the matriculation network. All nodes in the network have achieved the minimum residual pressure at each node which is at least 7.5 meter and not exceeding 30 meter. Next, pipes are to transport clean and treated water from the water storage tank to the targeted area. The diameter of pipe size in uh, our plan is 100 mm, 150 mm, 200 mm, and 250 mm. And the deep load, heat loss in every pipe is less than 2 m per 1000 m. Lastly, the water tank is designed in the shape of a cylindrical water tank. Then the dimensions of the water tank are assumed and calculated, uh, and then we calculate the height of the elevated water tank. The diagram shows the height of the water tank, which is 3 meter, diameter equals to 20 meter, elevated height equals to 5.5 meter, and the proposed level is 62.5 meter, which is the highest level. Next, move on to the costing and estimating. It is the process of estimating the cost and other resources needed to complete a project within a defined scope. There are a few types of equipment used in construction. First is the excavator. This is used for examining and other reasons like truly difficult work, destruction, stream digging, and cutting of trees. The second one is the bulldozer. This is broadly utilized for the evacuation of river soil or drop layers and lifting of soil. The uh, compactor is used to conservative the materials on earth surface. For the wheel loader, it is widely used on the building sites to stack the material onto unloaders or trucks. Fifth, a dump, a dump truck is used to convey the material in bigger amounts from one side to another side or to the landfill yard. Lastly, is a motor grader is used to even out the ground. For the cost of consideration, there are three costs which are material costs which includes the transport fees and discharge fees, labor costs which includes level of skill, local or foreigner, hiring period, and plant costs which includes output fees, fuel fees, hiring rate, and operator. The last one is the profit. Cost estimation before reduction and after reduction is calculated, so the cost estimation includes the site bearing, excavation of topsoil, cut to formation level, transport from cut to fill, fill to formation level, compaction, disposal, and grading. The first table is the bill of quantity before the cost reduction, while the second table shows the bill of quantity after the cost reduction. The cost reduction percentage is 22%. As a result, the goal of suggesting a new reduced level was achieved since the cost reduction reached 22%. In these topics of problems and solutions, I will be presenting the problems faced by each of our group members and their solutions. The first problem faced by the earthwork department is the site inventory and site analysis cannot be done with real field work, and their solution is to use the Google Earth and Google Maps satellite field to observe the site. Next, some, step, some slopes do not pass the factor of safety in slope stability analysis, which should be less than 2. The solution provided is to suggest a suitable retaining wall on the slope to avoid slope failure. For ESCP, the first problem I faced was finding the best hydraulic section. This is because we need to try and error until the Q capacity calculated from our proposed dimension is bigger than the Q peak. Next, I get confused with the LS factor for the three conditions. After doing some research, the LS factors for uncontrolled and controlled conditions are calculated based on the proposed level. The first problem faced by the water reticulation department is the velocity of water in the pipe did not meet the minimum requirement by span. So the reduced diameter, they reduced the diameter of pipes to meet the minimum velocity. Next, the heat loss increased in pipes after changes in pipe diameter. They decided to change the length according to the autocad drawing. The first problem faced by the costing and estimating department is the lack of complete specification for the cost of machinery and equipment. 
The uh, solution is to find a complete friend on the internet. Next, how to find the resources that haven't been taught. They research, they search for more journals or articles that are related. Thank you, Doctor, for spending time to watch my presentation.